Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about a, uh, a vulnerability uh, that was exposed recently uh, related to the Apache Struts 2 uh, framework. So, uh, so we're going to go through kind of the details of the vulnerability, and then we'll talk about some ways that that's been exploited. And then, uh, and actually, some good news on the way that F5 can help protect you from that. So, uh, so anyway, so it's been in the news lately. This Apache Struts 2 thing, and people are like, man, what in the world? Uh, which, by the way, man, Apache uh, Struts has been has been the uh, the recipient of some of these vulnerabilities and these attacks and all that lately. If you guys remember Equifax back, uh, I think just last year. Um, did not patch one of the critical vulnerabilities in Apache Struts, and man, that led to a big, um, you know, exploit, and it cost them tons of money and all that stuff. Anyway, nonetheless, you've got uh, you've got this new Apache Struts two, which, by the way, it's CVE number twenty eighteen dash one one seven seven six eleven thousand seven hundred seventy six, which means, by the way, in twenty eighteen alone, we have over eleven thousand pushing twelve thousand now vulnerabilities on the CVE list, which is crazy. Um, so anyway, vulnerabilities are uh, are rampant these days. Not that I had to tell you that. All right, so what is Struts uh, to start off with? You have uh, Apache Struts. I'll just uh, write it down here. Apache Struts 2 specifically in this example or in this uh, scenario. And this is a framework. Think of this as a framework um, that uses Java that you can build web applications from. All right, so we're going to have we're going to have your web app up here that you have built and this thing is amazing and everyone visits it and they you know love your web application well this thing has been built with uh, with parts and pieces of you know the Apache struts to framework and so you've taken you know the various components whatever and you've used this to build your web application all right so um, one of the things that I'll point out is that the Apache struts to put a little asterisk there this is the thing that has the vulnerability. So, uh, so a lot of people say, well, is my web application vulnerable? And the answer is it depends on what parts and pieces of Apache Struts you have chosen to use. All right, the specific thing that, uh, that is in play here in this, in this latest vulnerability is this idea of a namespace. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna write this up here. Uh, namespace and the vulnerability or the issue at hand here is you, you again you have this idea of namespace that needs to be defined um, and and should be defined in various again parts and pieces of the struts framework and sometimes this namespace value uh, for the various you know parts is not set or it's set to a wild card all right so um, if you if you choose to use you know again parts of the struts uh, framework and the namespace is not set or it's set to a wild card, you could be vulnerable. All right. In fact, there's two uh, primary things that need to happen in what we know to be the, the exploits that are out there right now for this vulnerability. And that is the always select full namespace flag is set to true. Uh, which that is done by default, frankly, for uh, for most of the configurations here. So again, Apache Struts framework is going to set that by default to true. So the always select full namespace uh, flag. And then if your application uses actions that are configured without a namespace or are configured that has a namespace of a wildcard value, um, then you could be and probably are vulnerable. All right, so the idea, uh, if you want to think of it without getting too deep into the, the craziness of the, of the real details of this thing, just think of it like this. You have this thing, uh, this idea of a namespace, and the, the, the components of struts that you have chosen to use to build your web application are going to say, um, we always want to select full namespace. I'll write it over here, so I'll say select full namespace and then the uh, and then if you use some actions that are configured without a namespace so uh, so then I'll say you know actions that don't have uh, we'll say no 
namespace, or I'll put like a little uh, you know wild card there. Uh, so sometimes, so either you have no namespace at all, or you have a wild card namespace. So again, the idea is that you have you've essentially told your application or told these actions, hey, let's select the full namespace, but then on top of that, you've said these actions that you choose to, that, that are run off of this thing, don't have a namespace, or they have a wildcard namespace, which means the namespace could be anything, all right? So that opens up the door for these attackers to say, okay, let me select the very specific parts and pieces of this framework that were used to build your web application um, where these conditions are met and whereby I can choose to exploit that and maybe introduce my own namespace. So that's the essence of, of how these attackers exploit this thing. All right, there are, um, there are very specific pieces and actions and all that that are exploitable in these vulnerable versions of Apache Struts 2. Uh, there are three result types that are unsafe when, are, when they're used uh, without a namespace. One is uh, called redirect action, another is uh, action chaining, and then the, other, the third one is uh, called postback. Uh, so anyway, so those are, those are uh, some of these actions that are vulnerable. Um, there's also this idea of a URL tag uh, that can be defined in a, in a uh, XML template. And if that uh, template is referenced by a package that does not provide a namespace, um, then, uh, or a namespace attribute, then that can also be uh, vulnerable to this whole, uh, you know, this whole problem. All right, so I just wanted to list those things. Those are some of the known parts and pieces that if you have those specific things configured, then, uh, then you could be vulnerable. All right, so what happens here is you have, I'm gonna put attacker up here because that's what, and that's what these people do. Um, so you're gonna have an attacker that's going to request your web application, um, which by the way, these, uh, these web applications that are built from Apache Struts too, um, are publicly facing you know, applications. They're your web applications. So attackers can very easily uh, attack these things directly, uh, exploit these problems directly. They can also scan for these things very easily and see, hey, do you have one of these very specific conditions that needs to be met for me to exploit this thing? They can scan for that very easily, by the way. So, uh, so this is a big problem, just to uh, highlight the importance of this thing. All right, what an attacker can do is send an HTTP request to your web application request and in that HTTP request, they can inject, I'm gonna put inject, this thing called an OGNL uh, expression. OGNL, pronounced OGNL, is, uh, stands for Object Graph Navigation Language, and it's a, it's a language that's used very heavily through the Apache Struts framework. Uh, by the way, attackers are very familiar with that language. Uh, but it's 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 a it's a language that's used just throughout this uh, this framework. All right. So what an attacker can do is uh, send an HTTP request, inject this Ognal expression, and in that Ognal expression, they can define their own namespace. Because remember, we're we're uh, telling we're telling this uh, you know the 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 issue at hand is at hand here is we're we're saying select the full namespace and then we're not providing a namespace, so the attacker can inject this, <clears throat> say, hey, you know what, if you're looking for a namespace and one was not provided, I'll provide you one via this Ognal expression, and I can, uh, and I can make that Ognal string um, you know, do whatever I want it to do, basically. Uh, so one of the problems, and, and I guess um, one of the, the foundational problem here is that the Apache Struts 2 framework does not validate um, the expression here properly. And so this is a user um, input uh, that the stress framework does not properly validate. And then because it does not properly validate that, it will run this expression and that expression could be anything, you know? And it, I don't have to tell you, an attacker is going to make that something that's not good, all right? So you may ask yourself, well, what are some of the things that the attacker could do? 
uh, the attacker can actually take over um, the web server. This is a remote code execution problem because they can remotely execute code, uh, you know, from these Ognal expressions on your web server. So our F5 Labs team has done some amazing work on this, and they actually found one uh, specific example of attackers using this very vulnerability uh, to mine for cryptocurrency. This is, uh, this is one of the ways. You, certainly attackers can use this to do any number of things. You know, when you can remotely execute code on a web server, you can do all kinds of stuff. But in this specific example, uh, it's kind of, I won't say it's cool, maybe it's kind of interesting, whatever. The attackers said, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to send an HTTP request. We're going to inject this Ognal expression, which is exactly what they did. And, uh, and in that, they executed a shell command um, that downloads and executes a malicious file. And again, based on everything I just said here, that command ran properly and it did what they asked it to do. So they, uh, they executed this shell command. It downloaded a malicious file onto the web server. And so now this malicious file's on here. The question is, what does that malicious file do? The malicious file um, goes to start basically mining for cryptocurrency. And in this specific example, it's the uh, Monero cryptocurrency. And, uh, and so they, uh, they, they essentially took over the web server to mine for cryptocurrency on their behalf. Um, Monero right now, just checked, actually it's worth probably a hundred US dollars thereabouts uh, today. So if they can get one Monero coin or one Monero cryptocurrency piece, then, uh, then they, just, they just made themselves a hundred bucks, you know, if they get, and you can do the math, you know, you keep expanding that out. If they can take over tons and tons of web servers and they can do that. So in that case, um, what would have been your web server, uh, which should be used to serve up your web application to your customers, is now mining for cryptocurrency on behalf of someone else. Uh, another interesting point to make on this one is that if, let's say you have this in the cloud, and let's say you're paying for computational time or, or for, uh, you know, uh, time to, uh, to, you know, to do things, you know, in the cloud. Uh, in this case, you would be paying for someone else to mine for cryptocurrency because <laughs> you're paying for compute, you know, in the cloud. So that's, uh, that's not a place you want to be. All right. So uh, that's just one kind of interesting place that our F5 Labs actually found this uh, in the wild that's being exploited right now. This whole vulnerability is only a couple of, a couple of three weeks old and it's already out there like that. Um, Apache has introduced a, um, a patch for this. Uh, there's a couple of different versions that are vulnerable. So you need to update your Apache uh, Struts 2 framework to the, to the latest and greatest edition. Uh, because even though you may have done the things that you needed to do here on the web application, the fact that the, the, the framework itself is vulnerable means that you need to update this thing. And so, uh, so then, you know, then your web application won't be vulnerable to these kind of attacks. One of the other things that I'll put over here is our, uh, our WAF, which is uh, either the, we, we have our ASM, the F5 WAF, the, uh, the ASM, or the Advanced WAF actually protects from this already, all right? So we didn't even know this was a thing, uh, what, a month ago. And any attacker that would have known about this, if you front your web application with our F5 WAF, then we already have built into our WAF uh, specific signatures and specific actions that we can take on action like this. And uh, there's a couple of them, uh, server-side code injection, uh, signature would have blocked this already. Uh, the Java servlets uh, JSP signature would have blocked this already. Uh, so again, prior to this even coming out and being a thing, um, if you had the F5 WAF uh, in front of your web application, then the attacker wouldn't be directly attacking your web app. He would have to come through the WAF and then the web app is behind that. Uh, the attacker would have never even gotten past the F5 WAF to begin with. So that's a pretty powerful thing that, uh, you know, that problems that arise from this framework, you know, that affect your web application are protected. Um, we'll call this a zero day uh, type scenario because this would have already protected it before we even knew about it. So, uh, so anyway, re really, uh, really powerful stuff here with the F5 WAF. So anyway, so I hope this has uh, clarified a few things on the new Apache Struts 2 vulnerability, the CVE 2018 11,776. Uh, so make sure you update your Apache Struts framework 
um, man, you, uh, it, it, it'd, it'd be very uh, valuable to have a WAF in front of your web application as well. So, uh, so thanks for hanging in there and watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click right up here on our DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.